All right, guys, welcome back. So in today's episode, we are going to be looking into two major things. The first one being to validate our errors so that they are much more user-readable or user-friendly is the word I'll use there. And also, we are going to implement our token control. So that way, we can ask our passwords. We can generate token for when we log in. So those are the things we are going to do. So these few things are not um, going to be engrossed. They're not going to be a major feature. They're going to be more of controls. So I'm going to start with the validation. So we want to have user-friendly errors. And to do that, I'm going to come down to my config. That's where I want to define something called validator validation. So I come down to config. And the tool we're going to be using to achieve this whole error friendliness is called validator from Google Dash. It's not new. We've done this before, so it's still the same thing. So technically, I'm just supposed to copy the code and show us. But nonetheless, I'm just going to walk through it again and we get to learn together and even see things in a better light. So for this, we are going to need to install the Golo Dash um, validator. So here we're going to have go get, then we have github.com slash Golo Dash slash validator. Like that. So here I'm going to create the required validator. It's the one that will format our required um, stuff. It's going to format it better so that it becomes visible. So here I'm going to have var g valid equals to candidate dot new dot custom messages. So here I need to have candidate dot message. Then here I go to specify required. This field is required. So yeah, Copilot tend to recommend this. I'm not sure what this looks like. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to influence that, but I'm going to leave it for now and see how it looks. However, that's not all we need to do to set up Galidator. We still have a couple of things. So we need to define a function to undo the error itself. So this is just more like a message control. It controls how the message is rendered. But we need a function to handle the error itself. Again, this is not new. So I'll come down to utils. I'm going to create the helper function. So here I'm just going to have functions that can stand on their own. And here I'm going to have undo error. So this takes in error of error. Then it takes in the gene contest. So I'll call the CTS gene contest. Then finally, it takes in the G valid. And taking a look at this, considering that our G valid is within our config, we can just use it directly instead of having to pull it. So yeah, let's work with that. So at the end, it's going to return an interface because we are not certain of the value it's going to return. It can either be a string or a different type. So just for that reason, we are going to return an interface and this has to be within the package utils so we have to import gene all right we don't that need. so now the first thing we want to share is if the request content length is zero so if say cts dot requests dot content length is equivalent to zero so in a situation where we didn't specify anybody at all then here we want to return provide provide a valid request body so the next thing is we want to try to validate if the error is a type of unmarshal error so if the error happened because we are trying to we couldn't marshal the data into the json body so here we can have if e comma okay then we try to define the type we are they will try to specify the type of error we are dealing with. So error dot into reference JSON dot on shell type error like that. The conversion is okay, so that's what if okay means here. So we are trying to convert the error to a JSON on shell error if the conversion is okay. So that means the error happened when we are trying to convert our payload into the go. Um, struct. So that's the Marshall flow. So here we can do if e.field is empty, 
then provide a valid uh, request body as well. Else, we want to define a message contest, and this is going to be fmt dot sprintf. So we have invalid body or the invalid value for field this. Yeah. Actually, what I want to do is invalid value for field this. So this is going to become field expected. So this is going to have full stop, and here we can have expected a value of type, then this becomes type. Finally, we can return the message. So in this case, as you can see, this is actually a string, so the interface can be complicated. Then finally, if it's none of this situation, then we want to use our G valid. So we want to have G valid dot decrypt. So we have to Okay, so we can't use our gvalid like this. We still have to put it up as a parameter, and that's because it has to take inference from the type of data it's even dealing with. So as a result of that, we have one more parameter to deal with here. So we come here, we have gvalid is going to be validator dot validator. Like that. So now we can have gvalid dot decrypt errors. Then we get the error itself. So we can close this. So now we have the undo error and we have gvalid defined under the config. So now we can come back to the auth. So here I'm going to have something called error viewer or whatever name you want to define. I call it error viewer. And this is going to be utils dot gvalid dot validator. Then specify the parameter we are dealing with, which is going to be db user param. So db dot user param as an object. So now in here, instead of just returning this error, we are going to return the one we get from the ambu error. So we are going to have utils dot undo error. And this takes in the error itself, it takes in the CTS then takes in the error viewer. So that's what we want to deal with. So now with this setup, our error should be much more user friendly. So let's test it out. Let's first set, let's first check if our backend is running, which it is. So now we can come back to Postman, come back to login. So let's try to log in without providing a body. So now we have a much more user friendly error telling us to provide a valid body. So let's provide a body without the necessary uh, parameter, the data we need. So now the error is saying that the few is required. So obviously this is not working. Copilot directed us wrongly. So we can come back to config and remove this. So it should just be the field is required. So the field will be specified in front of it, just like we've seen. So here I can have, yep. So email, the field is required. Password, the field is required. So maybe the field or this field. So let's use this field. So let's wait for it and test what's more. Yeah, so this field is required, which says. And now we can try to log in with this result. And yeah, we are logged in, which looks true. So we can replicate that for the register as well. So we'll copy the error viewer. Paste here. Then we copy this undo error. And we paste here as well. So we have a cleaner validation for both the register and the login. That's looking good. So that's the first part. So the second part of our flow would be to be able to hash our password. So in the process of trying to register the user, we don't want to put in the password directly. We want to hash it before saving it into our database. And to do that, we are going to implement our hashing configuration. So within our utils, we are going to come here and create another file called password.grow. And in here, we just need two functions. First, we have to define our package, package utils. So we need two functions. The first one is to generate the hashed password. And the second one is to verify that the password we are trying to send and the correct hashed one are the same thing. So for this, we need another package called the crypto bcrypt. So let's come down here, 
bash go get roland dot org slash apps slash crypto okay looks like it's available let's verify if we have it so here we are going to have import into Groland. yep so that's what we want and let's see if we are able to use this uh, amicably so here i'm going to need a function to hash password and yeah that's literally all we need so we take in the password we return an hashed version or an error if an error exists so bitwip generates password or rather generates from password then we convert it into a byte then we specify the default costs then we return a string of the hash which is what we want so this is yeah copilot seems to be okay here then the next one will be to verify password or rather compare password i think that's a better name so compare password we have the hashed password which is going to be a string then the new password we are trying to compare against and we can only have an error here so if there is no error it means it's valid so here we want to have a um, return so big crypt compare hash and password so we convert the hash to bytes we compare we convert the password to byte as well and we return and that's all we have to do that's all so now we can quickly use the hash by coming back here so before we create the user yeah we want to generate an hash password so here we can have hash password which is going to be utils hash password like this so yeah we are expecting both the hash password as well as an error so if there is an error that's an internal server error we should not have issue hashing our password so that's about that then the hash password can be changed with the password which is going to be user.password and we are cool with that so there seems to be an error here yeah error has been defined already so we don't need to redefine it so that's all we have to do so now the password has been changed from a regular password to an hashed password and that's what we can go so now if i come back to my compass and delete this record come back to postman and try to register again so if you try to log in again we don't have um the credential so we try to register this time around user is still created however if you come back to compass and refresh the password is now different it's an hashed password so if you try to log in again it's going to work or not so it's going to work because we are only just checking for the user so we are still logged in however we should not be able to so if we come back to our login flow so at this point we are able to get the user but that doesn't but that doesn't still mean we are logged in we still have to compare the user so here we can have error equals to utils dot compare password so we have the our uh, obtained user user so the hash password comes first so we're going to have the obtained user password then the default user password so the user which is here is not what we want however or rather instead we want the user here okay so if error if error is not new then that's invalid credentials so yeah you are forbidden and saying that now i actually think this should not be status not found this should be forbidden however if we change this to let's say one so without the compare initially this would have worked because the email exists however with the compare now the invalid credential situation will come up so let me remove the comparison and we see that so let's see if the server is working we're waiting for it yeah it's working now we can come back here and send so as you can see we get the result even though we have a wrong password so yep that's what the compare it's doing so we can get it back and make this work so once again we would verify that it's working secret one invalid credentials however the right password we get things so at the moment we are returning the password which should not be obviously we don't want to see the password however we're going to round up for today's episode here and in the next and in the next password while we fix the issue of returning password we don't want to see a message saying logged in we want to see an authorization token a token that allows us to get 
other information later in the future. So yeah, stay tuned for that and see you in the next episode. Bye for now.